Good evening. Good evening hymn is number 464, For the Beauty of the Earth, number 464 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Good evening. Good evening, Father. Welcome, dear sisters and brothers, to our Eucharist. Somebody said that this is the most beautiful mystery at this side of heaven. Welcome to our divine mystery. Today we offer our Eucharist in the intention of uh, Gerard uh, Puccio, uh, Artemios Tsimenakis, uh, Arnold Sims, and Felix and Gladys Jirowski. And we pray. We are here because we are children of God called to be an uh, extension of our, Lord mission, our Lord's mission. And today, we'll hear in our readings a beautiful parable, parable, a story about divine uh, farmer who is uh, actually planting the very precious seeds to the ground of our human uh, life. Let us accept our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that have greatly seen in my thoughts, in my words, we have done and we have failed to do. To my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, as Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Of your truth to those who are, go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith their prophets are accounted Christians, the grace of re to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Now we have a liturgy of the Word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the suffering of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, and hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. 
And not only that, but we ourselves, of the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and chucked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, beautiful and very well-known parable. Actually, parables used by Jesus are, for us, a beautiful picture describing so-called reality of God's kingdom. Spiritual God's kingdom actually is impossible you know, just to, 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 to find the word, appropriate word, to describe uh, how this God's kingdom looked like. So Jesus was aware about it, so he used to have these parables. Actually, I'm talking this about this because we are here this Sunday uh, to actually to open our hearts for such a beautiful, beautiful words. For us, they are seeds which are so important for us to, for our faith, for our uh, spiritual life. You know, it is hard to believe that we are now in almost the middle of July. This time, last summer, last year, I was in Poland, in Europe. Actually, not only in Poland. I, I enjoyed my summer vacation. 
And I was in Poland praying the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Little did I know that a year later we would be in the middle of a kind of pandemic and that our world would be turned ups and down. We don't really know what our reality is going to be even in the short term. Do we? What is school going to look like for our children and youth when classes are supposed to return in August? Do we know? I don't think so. What is our year of faith formation in our parish going to look like this fall for our children, our youth, and our adults? We don't really know the answers to these questions. Even though we have a faith that we are living under providence of our Lord, who is our Father, our Redeemer, and our Savior. I laugh the parable of the sword that we hear in our gospel tonight. In fact, we are going to hear different parables from the gospel of Matthew at our Sunday Masses these next few weeks. This is uh, part of our liturgy. The Word of God received in different ways in our lives, like seeds that fall on rich soil or on rocks or on dry ground. You know, I have a couple of uh, friends and families over here in the United States, not here on Long Island, but for example in Boston, in area uh, of, uh, just in Massachusetts. My cousin, Anna, up in Boston, sees, she saw the photos I sent her of our beautiful flowers here in Kachok, and she was very envious. You know why? She loves flowers and tries to grow them up in Boston each summer, but somehow they just don't grow as well up there as they do down here in our area, here in Kachok. Our job as disciples of Christ is to provide fertile ground for the Word of God in our lives to welcome his word and to nurture it in our lives, especially in our uh, families, places we are working. Therefore, we are responsible for our community, our families, our parish, beautiful parish community our country, our state. This is our life. It's impossible, you know, to, to find somebody who, be, who would substitute us for that. Never, ever. And also, I was talking about this a couple of days ago, we are members of our community of domestic church, our parish, and also our church. St. Paul, he actually uh, presents a very beautiful picture of such a community. He compared this community to the mystical body of Christ. Mystical body of Christ, beautiful picture. We know body. We are human beings. Uh, we have hands, we are head, we are ears, we are eyes, we are nose, we are mouth, legs. Every part of our body is very important. 
Because without our hands, we will be crippled. Could you imagine how it's, how it's horrible to, 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 to have a problem with hearing? Or with, even, you know, just somebody told me that one from side effects of coronavirus is lack of taste. Wow, that's horrible. You know, you wouldn't be able to actually to, to differentiate Polish food from Italian food. <laughs> this is absolutely horrible. Thanks to God, we are here, I hope, healthy. All our senses work very well. Of course, this is actually part, this is a kind of picture, you know, mystical body of Christ. What does that mean? Everyone, you and me, we have our own place in our church. And it's impossible to substitute you or substitute me in our vocation. Because we are like a beautiful, beautiful, you know, just uh, completeness. And we see our church from different ways. Another beautiful thing. I, I, as I said, this is, I, I don't have monopoly for understanding of our church. You, you are probably much more experience and you have much more knowledge to understand this church from your point of view. I can pretend, as I said, that I have a monopoly to, for, 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 I know, just uh, for everything. This is like, 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 I just uh, a couple of days I've compared this, like this beautiful, beautiful book. You see? This is a book. I see this book from this side. You see this book from this side. You have different point of view. You have different experience. And I have different experience. But still, this is the same book. I think similar experience we have with our church, with almost with everything. This is the reason why our American uh, state was, is, not was, is, so great. Because, because so many people from so many different parts of the world came here and decided to build one beautiful state. And everything, what we are doing, has its great sense. But we have different attitudes, sometimes different point of view. This is a great, great gift. Could you imagine a situation when we will be the same? That would be horribly boring. Horribly. My dear friends, why I'm talking about this? Because, especially now, we have to understand that we are responsible for this community and we have different 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 uh, actually obligations the church recently on trinity sunday reflected on the mystery of the of the god who is divine love this reflection of course is meant to be like that of a mirror not only a reflection upon on whom we adore. We reflect upon God as love because we, as his children, as his adopted children, are to be like him. And so are men to see ourselves in his reflections. Of course, this is very, very, very high task, high level. Of spirituality we are here to learn 
who we are as a children of God, as a members of our community. Self-knowledge is more complicated than knowledge of God because it has two contrasting parts. To be more specific, the fallen nature of man is divided. Rather than being simple in the way that God created man in the beginning on his uh, actually image and his likeness. On the one hand, is knowledge of, our, uh, of oneself as a fallen person, as someone who has stumbled and fallen into the field of sin. We are only human beings, weak and fragile. This is in addition to inheriting original sin, which leaves its traces even upon the baptized person. On the other hand, there is the knowledge of our oneself as someone loved by God. We are created from love and for love. One needs to know and reflect upon oneself as a person whom God has picked up out of our sin, washed in the blood, blood of the Lamb, and raised to the, to the dignity of his own child. We participate in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection. This is very, very powerful truth. So, these are three forms of knowledge. Knowledge of God. Knowledge of oneself as a fallen creature. And knowledge of oneself as raised by God. And these three forms of knowledge are like three legs of stool on which one sits. Without these legs, this stool would be very unbalanced. Could you imagine a stool having two legs or one leg? No, at least three or four or more, I don't know. <laughs> My dear friends, we are here to learn about our responsibility for evangelization. Beautiful parable emphasize this. And another thing, we are children of freedom. Everything what we are doing, we are doing as a free people, as a free man and woman. At the end of our reflections, I would like to emphasized a beautiful words by Ronald Reagan. I hope that you know who was Ronald Reagan. Actually, between us, he's one from the most great presidents, the most excellent presidents in the history of the United States. I love him. And he said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our grand children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. My dear friends, our freedom is a beautiful gift and very, very important responsibility. Definitely, we are children of freedom. We are created for freedom. So, in this Eucharist, let us pray for our awareness that we are responsible for this. Nobody will give us these gifts. Never, ever. So, yet we are going to have to continue to be creative in the way 
we practice our faith, in the way we journey through our faith formation program, in the way we live out our faith and evangelize others in our words, and first of all, in our actions. My dear friends, may the Lord bless you to all of your endeavor in this week, in your life. And may the Holy Spirit continue to lead us and guide us during these challenging days. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, please rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things were made, as men of our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, as uh, spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, as we try to bring Christ's love to the world, by the way we live, we offer our prayers to our almighty God. That our sisters and brothers throughout the world, especially those stricken with the coronavirus and those whose livelihoods have been adversely affected, may not lose hope other faith and hope in God will find new strength to help sustain them in body and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of all nations, they work to bring about an end to war and support societies that foster peace and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who risk their lives in military service and all essential workers, that they be safe in their work that migrants be welcomed with generosity, that the poor be cared for, that those who suffer persevere in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill and their caretakers, that they experience God's healing love through the love and prayers of our parish. And for those who have died, they share in the everlasting light and love of the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, that we that we might be signed. Gerard Pouchot, Artemis. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lifting our heart to God in confidence, silently offer our individual
May the light of your compassion what you have called us to be. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Pray. Your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right. Eternal God through Christ our Lord. His death was celebrated. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all. Found of all holiness, make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, For oh, this is my body. In a similar way, my blood, the blood of the new Thank you. 
I and the challenge of blood of Christ, we may be got rid with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the your face. Have mercy on us. Praise and glorify you. Through him and with him and in O oh God Almighty Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. But deliver us from evil, deliver us, Lord. As you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Thank you. Look not on our sins. Your church. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God.
a saving effect upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Now, uh, Holy Communion will be distributed. Next Sunday, we'll have a. Uh, uh, we. Uh, mm, that's somebody. I love this handwriting. Probably. To, 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 to read up. We have a second collection. Uh, the Diocesan Mission Appeals Office is sending at all Masses during that weekend on behalf of Catholic Mission. He will come with his wife and they are going to stay in our parish. This couple are from, from have them for means allow to you to support. For annual raffle again. I think next weekend, July 18 and 19. Remember, masks or cloth facial covering must be worn by all present, present at, masses, at mass except for children under the age of two and you. Understanding and cooperation. Before our communion, I would like to express my best wishes. Have a wonderful, blessed weekend. Enjoy this time because it's absolutely gorgeous. We are living was in paradise. My dear friends, May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended going to the episode.